This is a foundation inspection. We're uh, at the uh, right elevation of the building. Um, a couple of concerns. Uh, here, the grade is far too high uh, up against the foundation. It needs to have a clearance from where the brick line is down to where the grade starts around about six inches, four to six inches. Um, and here it's clearly quite high. Here we've got a lot of bushes that are up against the foundation. They're not good bushes, uh, they consume a lot of water. And as a consequence, they can affect the foundation by drying out areas uh, close to the, uh, the foundation. You can see here we've got tree roots down here. There's a big tree here. Um, almost certainly those roots will extend under the foundation of the building. Um, not much you could do about it, um, but be aware that there could be roots growing under the foundation itself. Around here, we're coming up to the neighbour's drive. And there's a lot of build up of debris and, and mud up against the foundation here. What you can do to uh, uh, reduce the, the, the problem of bushes is to have these trimmed back. Back against the wall here, we come around here, this area here, you see the bushes, how they're touching the wall? Well, you want to cut them back so that you can walk between them. You don't need a wide path, but you need to go there. That keeps the bushes away from the, uh, the building, it keeps insects and everything off the bushes, and uh, it reduces, uh, by cutting them down a bit, it will reduce the amount of water they will expirate. In other words, consume. Let's go to the uh, front elevation of the property. We are now at the uh, left elevation and what we've got here is exposed post tension cable ends. Um, this is a cable, runs right the way through the foundation, gives it its strength and it needs to be covered, there's another one here. If it's not covered it can rust and uh, then it can deteriorate and you will have a problem with the foundation. But it's very easy, you just cover it with a uh, cement, it's called parging and that will seal it. We have a little bit of erosion here. Uh, this is the opposite of what we've got the other side, where we got too little soil here, not enough the other side. More post-tension cable ends exposed here. Again, covering them up will, will help a great deal. Now we're at the rear elevation. And we've got, uh, as you can see here, a flower bed. Um, got uh, some stones around it and everything. That is a problem. That can cause pooling of water. And you've got another one here, which is going to trap water. In fact, you can see water's been trapped here. Can you see where the uh, siding is damaged? Now the culprit is here. You've got this plastic um, edging, which is sealing the water in and not allowing it to drain. What you want to have is drainage of that water out into the rest of the yard away from here as it is at the moment it's trapped in this area and this will give a water hot spot in other words what will happen is water concentrates here and it causes the ground to expand more here than it does at another point and that causes differential movement in the structure This is a roof inspection. We're on the roof over the garage and you see here there's a penetration. It's a vent pipe, sewer vent pipe. And it's actually dropped down. It needs to be pushed up. It's actually dropped into the uh, attic. There's another one over here. Let's go and have a quick look at that. Now 
that's in okay condition it's sealed it's not going to leak This is the apex of the roof and we've got a couple of nail heads exposed here. They need to be corked. This is the upper roof inspection. I'm going to be inspecting it from the ridges only. So I'm not going to work out onto the field apart from this part here where I've mounted the roof. Here we've got a skylight and the nails protruding from the skylight here around the flashing they should be driven in. Here we've got the flashing at the rear that looks in good condition apart from along here we've got nail holes which could allow water back behind it. They should at least be corked there's signs that this skylight has leaked in the past. You can see there's some corking around it. So I fully expect it to leak in the future if it's not recorked and painted. Uh, it needs to be sealed. Uh, skylights are a major cause of water uh, into a property. So you might like to have this uh, addressed. The general condition of the roof is average, the shingles are flexible, they're not brittle. It's almost impossible to tell the age of a property uh, or a roof uh, without proper information which we don't possess. So all I can say to you is that it's in average condition. This is the chimney, it serves your property. And you can see here there are screws that have come out of the siding here. Uh, this is a, a prior repair. I would imagine there was an aerial here and that's been taken up and you see you've got a bit of a board here um, to actually take the, the weight of the aerial. That needs to be sealed. General condition of the siding of the chimney is poor. It needs to be repainted. and the condition of the uh, flashings is okay but I would like to see a bit more corking especially of the nail heads here the trim is coming away and, and that needs to be addressed I'm standing on the neighbouring property's garage roof and we're looking at the trim board here and it's rotten, um, completely rotten. That's got to be replaced. Soffit vent over the uh, adjoining property's garage there's the chimney up there that soffit vent there is coming away I'm in the attic over the garage and you can see this is the vent pipe that's fallen back into the attic it needs support and lifting up so it passes through the attic Okay, well this attic 
is okay. However, the attic doesn't have a hatch, a proper hatch. And it should, because it should be sealed so that fumes and exhaust from the car don't get into the attic. Now, normally this is a major call out because the attic is attached to the house, but in this case, the attic is sealed from the house. But I'm still gonna ask for a, a proper attic door with a weather seal on it to be fitted just to cover us and make sure it is safe. This is the wall inspection. We're at the rear elevation. There's some deterioration in the siding here. Um, it's got a lot of water penetration. Now this raises concerns with me that water has penetrated the wall. You can see down here, around here. And what can then happen is that organic growth can get established inside that wall. And without actually opening it up, it's not possible for me to tell you what's there and I can't do that but I am going to when I meet you recommend that you have a mould um, uh, inspector uh, carry out a survey of the property because there is considerable amount of water penetration and mould can be an issue when that occurs here at the rear elevation the window down here you've got rotting trim as well it, it's it's completely rotted away uh, and that means a lot of water has been getting in behind that wall in uh, rainy weather. We're now at the uh, garage. We're looking at the brickwork. This is a brick veneer. We're at the left-hand elevation of the property. We're looking for cracks in the walls. Cracks in the walls indicate movement. And we're hoping we don't find any. We're now at the garage and right here we have a hole in the trim board uh, between the trim board and the brickwork and also this is an area of high water concentration we have a gutter downpipe emptying onto the roof here and in windy and wet conditions the water is going to come around and down it will get through that hole and that will cause a leak and there are all, there is already evidence in the garage of water penetration and I think this is where it's coming from. We're at the left elevation now. This 
is the window inspection you can see here this window here has considerable rot on the trim work the corking is failing the trim above it and the siding is almost certainly leaking and the window above us is also going to be leaking in heavy rain it's going to go straight into the property there's nothing to stop it and water just goes where it can at any time this is the other window I need to get close to it again the cork is in poor condition and the siding above it is in poor condition a little bit better than the other but it could do with some repaints and then here adjoining garage you can see here we've got a big hole again like the one around the corner this one is not going into the garage though this is going into your house so there's water been penetrating almost guaranteed water's gone into that wall there as reinforces my call for a mold inspection because I don't want you moving into a house that has mold and I've got too many telltale signs it's costly I know but it's well worth the money uh, to have it inspected to establish it hasn't or has not got mould I'm standing to the right of the garage and we're looking up at the, uh, the soffits really what's drawing my attention is the crack that appears at about a foot in from the corner it's a settlement crack so there's a little bit of settlement going on in addition to that the settlement has caused this trim work here to come away it's pulled right away and that is going to allow more water to get into the wall uh, on the upstairs and certainly flow down to the wall below This is the garage ceiling and you can see here this is evidence of water penetration running all the way along here and it's current. The water is actually penetrating uh, which I've pointed out already but just to completeness I go around here. Water here is penetrating here into the attic and it's running along the soffits and along the drywall up here. It would also be running into the wall system here and you can see if you look at the wall system there is evidence of prior water penetration Evidence of water penetration at the ceiling here. More evidence of water penetration here. And there's evidence of water penetration up here on the upper ceiling. This will be from the roof above not from that leak we had when we first came to inspect the property this is the banister balustrade at the landing and you can see I can move it this is not safe um, this could give way believe it or not there's a phenomenon it's called stress cyclic stress what actually happens is when something is loose like this 
movement over the years causes the metal to stress and at some point that could break in an instant it's literally microseconds and it breaks and if you're holding on to it which is when it would break you're going to fall straight down these stairs these this must be replaced it's really very poor we're in the upper floor again we're looking at ceilings telltale signs of water penetration at any time this is the skylight there's evidence of water penetration up here oh, I can't tell you where it's old or new again here the water's been penetrating as we know, when we were up on the roof, you'll see from the video, I discovered multiple points of border, of border entry. We're on the uh, second floor and you've got a raised patio here, it's actually been stored over the roof for the lounge below. The roof itself, from what I can make out, is metal. But you should be aware that these are areas where leaks can occur and there's no way I can test it for leaking. There's no evidence down below that there is a leak, but I just want to point out to you that the the uh, the roof is a, is a is a is can be a concern. However, on the good side of it, it's sloped correctly. It's going to drain, uh, and there's no extensive wood rot here. But this is loose. This is dangerous. You can see how I can move that. At some point, that could give away. Um, you have a party up here and a lot of your friends lean against that you could go in an instant that's got to be repaired this is the <coughs> main panel just going to check the air conditioner this is the air conditioner breaker according to the labeling and according to his well, we're going to look. It says it should be a 40. This is a 40 amp breaker. That's pretty big. Let's go and look at the AFC unit itself. If I can remember where it was. I think it's around here at the front. Yeah. Here's the unit here. It's a new unit, so I can tell you it's gonna have the wrong breaker size. I know that just by looking at it. Okay. Maximum breaker size is 30 amps, it's 40 amps. Okay. That's uh that's gotta be changed out. Um, what it will do is cause this, this could cause to fail cause a problem with the electrical circuitry and the breaker won't uh, cut the circuit. This 
the main panel. I have aluminium drops coming in. Okay. This is the hookup for the uh, washer, washer, and you can see that the uh, they are missing uh, handles. That makes them inoperable. Uh, I recommend that they are replaced.